idea what this is for. I mean, some kind of electrical accessory, but I honestly don't know what. It's kind of a weird thing to leave in a shelf. Now keep in mind, uh, this isn't gonna be perfect. These struts are gonna contact the Reflectix. So you need to give this system a little bit of leeway, but these are also old panels that I'm reusing. So they're not quite a perfect fit. And so for a truck shell, this is, this is a quality level that I'm happy with. Um, and even for the summer, this Reflectix is gonna be useful for keeping light and heat out of the truck. Just as in the winter, it'll be useful for keeping heat in the truck. I'm gonna see about getting the back window in, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna have enough to work with there. So for those of you who don't exactly know how to get new struts for your camper shell, uh, they're actually really easy. So you can see they're easy to replace. Um, what is also true is that they're easy to find which ones you need. So I just went with the cheapest stuff I could find on Amazon or whatever, these Vega Poo ones. These, these ones don't have specs on them. The ones that I'm replacing have specs on them. So I'll show you one of those. So the old ones that are on the truck, these uh, Suspa ones, which was another buying option, these carry specs on them. So C160-3795 is a part number, and then 24 pounds uh, is the weight. Just the C16, that part number will tell you extended and collapse length. You can also measure to verify, but I just ordered based off a of part number and I had no issues. Supposedly you can order these with or without new balls to go in the fitting. Uh, all the ones on my truck are riveted on, like fixed. They're not really easily removable, so without balls works fine in my application. If you ever need to loosen them, you're just gonna pop this spring, pop this spring loose flathead screwdriver right under there, pull that out a little bit, and it'll pop right off the ball. I guess I never really explained this whole shell and how I got it, why I got it. I had my gray one, and it was good. Um, this one was actually cheaper than my gray one, so I made money upgrading. Uh, this one's got the contractor windows that I really like. Just being able to reach like this, perfect. And it had the roof bars on it already. So not only did it have the rails, it also had the bars. Um, my gray one just had the rails and bars are another $200, $300 kind of upgrade. Now these bars themselves aren't worth $200, $300. You saw they're kind of nasty, but just having them there, um, that saves me $200. And this one was 100 bucks cheaper than what I ended up selling uh, the gray one for. It. This was a good deal. This is 400 and then about $40 in parts to get four new struts and a pair of keys. It didn't come with the keys and it didn't come with struts. Um, so cheap, easy upgrades, stuff that's easy to fix. It's not like there's a busted rear window. Uh, just new struts, that's super simple. I'm really not a big fan of stickers on truck shells or vehicles in general. I've done it before, the whole sticker bomb thing. It's not really a fan. Luckily this shell, unlike my last shell, this one only came with, I think, just this one sticker. Okay, I think I'm starting to get, I think I know why that sticker's there now. Um, I guess we'll be removing two stickers today. This hardware right here is super rusty, so we're gonna, See if we can't loosen it up just a little bit.
But one of the kind of important features of this build is this little drawer shelf. It's not really secured to the bed, it's just stable and it stays in place. It covers some of my toolboxes. So first, my DeWalt socket set. This is probably a little bit more extensive than you need, depending on who you are. For me, I work on my truck pretty regularly. So this is about every nut, bolt, screw on the truck. Gloves, this is a really good set of tools just to start with. You can get away with glass if you need to. This is a rifle case I found on Amazon. Magea, not really sure how you pronounce that. Waterproof, you know, the whole thing. It's got foam. I could cut this out if I wanted to fit more tools. So far, I haven't needed them. So, air compressor, zip ties, WD 40. I've got some spare valve caps that I have from just having to replace them. Shrink wrap. Some of this stuff is just miscellaneous things that I don't want to store in the garage, but I got like hose clamps. It's a little out of order. Torque wrench. And then I got this front end kit. This is what I use to replace the ball joints on my truck. You can also use it for tie rods. Um, this is pretty, pretty useful. And if I ever have that famous lower ball joint failure, this is going to come in handy. I've got some miscellaneous sheet metal screws and some punches, uh, some cotter pins in here. Uh, with the shell, there's a lot of sheet metal screws. And so I just kind of naturally got a collection from working on this shell and my previous shell. And then I've also got this. So I've got my impact and a couple different kinds of pliers, wrenches, uh, I have wire cutters, snap ring pliers, grips, crescent wrench. And I keep a few things in the truck as well. But this is how I've built out the bed thus far. And it's worked really good. Um, that shelf, honestly, just being able to keep all this stuff in the same spot, kind of out of sight and kind of just out of the way, and something that I can still stack stuff around has been super useful. Here's a little bit better view of this. It goes, like I said, full length of the bed. Doesn't take up even half of the bed, maybe about a third of it. And this slides off. If you've watched any of my camping videos, you know that I flip this over and then I slide it under here and I leave the toolbox on it. And then it comes out maybe a foot and a half past my tailgate. It's a really nice cooking surface to have, honestly. Um, but it's not incredibly sturdy. It gets the job done. It just keeps the stuff kind of out of the way and still gives me a flat surface to stack Even, stuff on. So I've tried different air mattresses um, and this is what I've settled on is just one of these self-inflating pads. This one's by Alps Mountaineering. I got it on a marketplace, pretty decent deal, about half off compared to brand new. And this is about as much as I can add. I can maybe stack two and then still be able to sit up. So I'll show you. So right here, I can comfortably sit up. My hat's just barely touching the truck if I really arch like this, but like the way I'd normally sit up, I can actually sit up in the truck. If I try and sit on here, I have to hunch, which isn't really useful. So this works. An air mattress is actually too thick for me to sit up like this, and I hate when I wake up having to hunch over and find stuff. I know people love to build truck drawers, and they'll usually set them, you know, somewhere about like right here and then toss a full mattress. But then you're, you're always crawling whenever you're in your truck bed. You're never even close to really sitting up. This works great. At six foot in a six and a half bed, I can fully stretch out. Perfect. These pads are kind of deceiving. So if you're looking at them and you kind of like you sit on it, see like you can press in. Once you get your full body weight spread out over the pad, they're actually very supportive. Um, I just let them, I leave this one inflated, uh, that way I don't have any problems at camp. But put it out in the heat, let it inflate, blow some air into it yourself, and then you'll be good to go on these. And I could probably stack another one if I found that this wasn't comfortable enough. But this has worked really good. I keep all my stuff in here, 
um, and that's worked really well. So like my toiletries, uh, anything that needs working on, anything I've packed, I can still stack here, sleep right here. That's been a really good setup. Uh, and I'm gonna try it out with this shell uh, this weekend. You can probably see I keep a few things stored over here. I've got trash bags right here. And then I've got this fan that I found pretty handy just for keeping a little bit of airflow. I like a little bit of noise when I fall asleep. So you turn it on, increase the speed. It's got a light. You can charge it. I charge it off a portable charger. It's got a USB plug-in, USB-C plug-in right here in the back. So I just keep a portable charger on me. And uh, this has worked really well so far. Um, I've got a few things I'm trying out this weekend. I got a new camp pillow. We'll see what I think of that. And I also got this like silverware, plate, fork, spoon, cup set six piece. I always struggle to remember those things and keep them together so hopefully this is going to help me with that. Okay, so wow, this is water. Okay. Bowl. Plate. cup. Pretty impressive. Alright. Looks like spoon knife and fork spoon knife holder. Oh, I overdid it. Right there. I would give that a score of pretty neat. We'll see how I like it tomorrow. These contract windows are already coming in handy. So guys, thanks so much for watching. This is just a simple, minimalist, build-out type setup here. This is really low-key. I didn't even show everything that I have. This is kind of basics, you know, what it takes. Camper shell, a little bit of organization, a few bins, and you're really ready to go for a weekend. You know, take care of your sleeping setup, uh, and you're good to go. It's really not that hard. It doesn't take a lot of money. It doesn't take a ton of gear. Obviously, you know, I've got things that not everybody's gonna have. Not everybody's gonna just have a camping stove sitting at home. There are things you're gonna have to buy, but I try to keep it as low key, as cheap, and just as fun focused as possible. And a light setup like this allows me to do that. So thanks for watching, and uh, be sure to stick around for more videos. Thanks, guys.